Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization Technique Mistakes and Fixes video, the upright row. Let's take a look at what's good, what's bad, how to fix it so we can get gigantic side delts, traps, and whatever the hell else the upright row trains. So first of all, let's review the purpose for doing the upright row. It's not just something we do for fun, although it can be fun. We're trying to hit the side delts, some with the traps, and some of the forearm flexors, and even the muscles that grip as well. But mostly the target is the side delts and the traps. So mistake number one in the upright row that we want to avoid is pulling the bar not high enough, sort of arbitrarily. So go ahead, uh, Crystal, go ahead and try pulling it. So sometimes with usually less immaculate technique, folks will stop the upright row right there. Now there's nothing wrong with stopping it there if any higher hurts your joints. But if you're stopping there just to use usually more weight, it's not great because your side delts really engage a whole lot more all the way through movement, especially the traps as well. Going higher is good. So Crystal, if you want to pull maybe to your clavicle at this point, like, yeah, at least to there is good for most people. So the fix here is just pulling higher, which often means using less weight. So first mistake was not pulling high enough. The second mistake is actually pulling too high. Now, what does too high really mean? There's really no such thing as too high in the upright row as long as you feel your side delts and traps activating and as long as your shoulders and elbows and wrists don't hurt a ton. A lot of folks will think they have to pull really high. We get a ton of shoulder discomfort and it's not something that goes away after a couple of reps or sets. It often gets worse and worse and worse and eventually leads occasionally to not so great things for the shoulder. So if it really pains your actual shoulder joint to go super high, stop going that high and go only as high as you can safely. So this is what it might look like. Crystal might pull the bar up. You know, she heard on YouTube, you gotta go up and oh my God, it hurts her shoulders. Not just once, but she does a couple reps and maybe she's tried this a whole bunch and it's just not working out. So what she's gonna do is just maybe pull it to about the clavicle region or as high as she can. It feels totally fine. Plenty of range of motion for great hypertrophy stimulus. You don't have to be an upright row hero to get great results. The next mistake in upright row technique is to actually do a pretty good concentric movement but not control the eccentric at all and let the bar drop pretty quickly just by gravity's force. So go ahead and show us that. So normal up and then down, ugh, you gotta drop. Now you might not be falling forward, but you're definitely not controlling the movement. Can we get another one of those bad reps? So it's good on the way up and on the way down, we just let the bar drop. That's not necessarily a terrible thing, but you get a lot of stimulus out of the eccentric contraction out of the control on the way down. So why miss a bunch of the growth and risk a little bit less safety if you can just control the weight more. So go ahead and do it the right way. We're gonna come up under control and we're gonna come down under control. It's not like 50, you know, milli 50 whole seconds to bring it down. You're not super controlling the eccentric. We're not saying go super slow, just have control the bar. One more time, up and then control on the way down. That's it. Folks, the next mistake isn't a huge mistake. Uh, it's the one when you arc your bar just arbitrarily way too far out from your body. So go ahead and make that motion. So it's a decent upright row, but the bar ends up real far out and sometimes folks pull it back in like she's doing at the top, but ends up being this big forward arc that does activate a lot of the muscles we want, but it also activates the front delts a little bit more, the side delts a little bit less. And usually it lets you use less weight productively. So the easy fix here is just to focus on making sure your elbows go up and not forward and to just focus on keeping the bar close to yourself at all times. So go ahead and make that fix. Keep the bar close, elbows go up and then they go down and just a couple more reps like that. Perfect, that's it. So a lot of these fixes are literally just making an effort mentally not to do the wrong thing. Folks, the next mistake is looking for an ideal grip in the upright row. A ton of folks who want to do the upright row will ask, hey, what's the best grip for the upright row? And then someone will give them an answer, which is usually met very well. Oh, you know, it's medium grip right here, or wide grip hits the side delts more, or this hits your traps more, and it's better for your shoulders. But it turns out that the human shoulder joint and a bunch of the other parts of the body have a lot of variation. Muscle design has variation. Some people feel comfortable and feel it more effectively if they do their own individualized grip. And there is no golden grip for the upright row. So some folks might try a really close grip and someone told them this was the optimal. They might do some upright rows with it and you don't have to do that. Might do some upright rows with it and it hurts their shoulders a ton. And then they switch. Someone else said maybe do a wide grip. So they'll do a super wide grip. And then, you know, that apparently doesn't work either. And they'll think, man, the upright row is just not for me. And they'll keep asking people, hey, what grip works? Folks, the solution here is to stop asking people what grip works 
and try a bunch of different grips yourself. And maybe for her, a medium grip, just guessing, might actually be the best one. But for you, it might be totally different. Give it a shot with different grips. And heck, you can even try dumbbell upright rows, cable upright rows, a bunch of different implements to find the grip that works for you. How do you know it works? It hits your side delts, gives them a pump. You can feel it in the muscle. They get a little bit of a twinge and weakness later. And it hits your traps. And it doesn't bother your shoulder or elbow or wrists either at all or very little. The next mistake in the upright row is to not be using a consistent technique from rep to rep and set to set. This happens, interestingly enough, all the time. Sometimes it's ego, but a lot of times the fix for this is just not having the will, or rather the fix is having the will to say, you know what, I'm gonna do these reps very, very similarly, which offers us a bunch of benefits. First of all, it offers us a great uh, ability to evaluate the upright row's effects. It doesn't hurt my shoulders, doesn't give me a pump. If all the reps are different, you're not really sure if maybe you're just doing some of the reps wrong, or if the exercise isn't right for you. Once you're doing the reps in a very similar way, you can evaluate the exercise really well. In addition to that, it allows us to track and program really well. You know, if you did 100 pounds in the upright row for sets of 10 last week, you do 105 for sets of 10 this week, and you get all sets of 10 super well, you're getting better, you're getting stronger, that's a good thing. But if your reps are always different in range of motion and how they look, you can't really sell like Maybe I just cut less of my reps this time, or I cut more of my reps this time, I don't even know if I'm getting stronger. So just to see what this looks like in the real world, you know, Crystal might do the first rep sort of pretty normally, and then she might pull way too low on her second rep. I don't know why. And her third rep, she might pull high, but then she might stop this rep and go up again. Who knows, right? We want one standardized rep, looks pretty much the same every time. Go ahead, show us that it looks like up and all the way down and all the way up. If you do the similar reps every single time, you're gonna get results that you can use predictably, and that's a very, very important part of any training program. All right, folks, the next mistake is one I'm sure you've seen a trillion times in the gym. It's just using a ton of body English. So a lot of times when people up at row, they turn it from an exercise designed to hit the side delts and traps. By that, we mean uses the side delts and traps and not much of anything else to one that maybe is just trying to lift as much weight as possible. So usually the fix here is to reduce the weight on the bar and focus on good technique, not doing any hip drive, not doing any crazy swing. Crystal, go ahead and show us what that looks like. Uh, yeah, you're doing some kind of, and this is even really good technique because it's really consistent. <laughs> For, but you know, a lot of times, yeah, you just get really crazy stuff. Folks, if we were training the glutes and the hamstrings, we could absolutely in include a dynamic high pull type of thing from Olympic weightlifting, but we're just not doing that. So when you do the upright row, don't let ego take hold and make sure you just stick to the strict technique and use the muscles that you're supposed to use, which are the traps, the side delts, and all the muscles of the upper body, nothing in the legs, no swinging, no BS. Strict technique is super important but not if it comes at the great expense of muscle activation, that is trying really hard. A lot of times when using plenty of weight on an exercise, there'll be natural shifts in your center of gravity that you just have to adjust for, so you can't stay completely upright at all times and you can't go super slow just like a textbook. It's gonna look close, but not exactly. Some people will do super overly strict technique, everything will be straight. That means they have to go super slow. They always pause at the top, super slow on the way down. It ends up looking like a textbook. You don't get a ton of muscle activation because you're so busy trying to move correctly. You don't even bother activating the muscles at all. It looks great externally, but internally it's not that challenging. In the real world, if there was lots of weight on here, it's okay to lean forward a little bit at the bottom and lean back at the top. It's totally fine. It's not craziness, it's just reality. So don't perseverate on having perfect technique that's completely textbook book with an unloaded bar. When you have a loaded bar, things are getting a little weird as long as you're not purposefully adding momentum to the movement. It's okay for things to look a little bit realistic and not overly insane. If you're paranoid about using perfect technique and it's always leading you to cut reps, cut weight off the bar and super focus on this technique, you might not be growing as much as you could be. The target musculature of the upright row are the side delts and the traps, okay? It's not the grip. We have other forearm exercises for that. Here's the problem. If you have grip as a limiting factor in your upright rows, you might not actually get a really good side delt workout or trap workout because your grip will go to failure first or really close to failure. You'll have to stop the set and your side delts and traps might be reps and reps away away from failure, which is not remotely optimal for growth. So how do you solve this problem? First of all, you have to be honest with yourself. If you're missing the upright row because your hands are letting go, that's bad news. What do you do? Chalk is a great idea. Straps are a great idea. The best idea, and we are not paid to say this, 
is the VersaGrip. It is a miracle form of technology. I have no idea how the hell it works. It's the single greatest investment you could ever make into your back and shoulder training. Give one of these a shot. It's gonna be awesome. Grip won't be a limiting factor. You'll get way more reps and use way more weight in this exercise with strict technique than ever before. And you'll be like, holy crap, what the hell was I doing before this miracle VersaGrip came into my life and made me a better person? Next mistake for upright rows is one in which you can't feel your side delts a ton or your traps a ton. Maybe you're not sure what you feel. Maybe you feel in the forearms, maybe in the biceps, or maybe you don't feel it at all anywhere except for your joints. There's a couple potential fixes to this. The reason it's a problem is because we have to feel something in the target muscles in order to be ensured that they're actually training and getting a really good stimulus. Now, if you just go through the range of motion with weight, yeah, sure, they're gonna be involved, but maybe not optimally. There are some fixes to this specifically for side delts. If you're not feeling your side delts enough, you might be able to play with some grip widths, maybe wider, maybe narrower. Maybe you can pull your elbows back. Maybe you can pull them higher, maybe lower. Experiment to make sure that you're not just going through a motion, but you feel the target muscle working. Another option is to do a pre-exhaust or rather just place another exercise before upright rows or even right before it in, tr in true superset fashion of actual side laterals or bent laterals. And when you do those, your side delts will become the limiting factor on the upright rows after and you'll feel them that much more, making the upright rows, relatively speaking, a more effective exercise for your side delts. And lastly, I'm gonna say something completely crazy in the upright row video, you don't have to do upright rows. Tons of people don't do them. A lot of people hate them and they still have huge delts. There are like 50 trillion side delt and trap exercises. You do not have to do upright rows. Now what you should do is give them due diligence, try them for multiple mesocycles to see if you can play with the technique to get them to work for you because they're an excellent exercise. But if at the end of the day, all they do is mess up your joints, just stop doing them and do something else. The last mistake commonly seen in the upright row is the practice of going too heavy. Now, even if you have strict technique, you can go too heavy. Of course, if your technique's not strict, you should almost certainly reduce weight off the bar, consider it, get a stricter technique, and then a lot of your problems are solved. However, for most people, remember we have th uh, three, <laughs> I don't even know how many fingers I have, three hypertrophy ranges, the five to 10 rep range, close to failure, the 10 to 20 range, and the 20 to 30 range. We find that the upright rows, because of the nature of the exercise, because the shoulder joint in that position doesn't seem to tolerate a whole lot of load, a lot of the mind-muscle connection tends to break down at really heavy weights. Can you do upright rows in the five to 10 rep range? Yes, but if you're not feeling the muscle and if you're getting a lot of eh, joint discomfort, don't throw away the upright row just yet. It might just be that you're using too much weight even if you're doing strict technique. So if you're feeling like that and you're doing really heavy weight, try the 10 to 20 range. And if that doesn't even feel so, so stimulative and feels too fatiguing, try the 20 to 30 range. I know, crazy, but when you put on your brand new Versa grips, I swear to God they don't pay us to say this. I don't even know if I'm legally allowed to use that <laughs> term. So when you put on your Versa grips or whatever, your chalk and your grip's not a limiting factor, a set of like 25 in the upright rows can kill your side delts, torture traps. Give it a shot. You might find that you have this awesome exercise you just weren't considering because you were always going to heavy on this. I did that for years. When I lightened up the weight, my shoulders got bigger. Folks, give that a shot. That's all the mistakes we have for today's exercise of upright row. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in to the upright row correction video. A couple of points to sort of summarize and tie everything together. All of these tips are relative to the individual. It's up to you to use them to maximize your abilities. At the end of the day, you want the upright row and any other exercise to be as stimulating as possible to the target musculature and as little fatigue as is necessary. So we're gonna avoid a ton of extra effort, a ton of joint stress, and we're gonna try to maximize how messed up the muscle, the target muscle gets from what you're trying to do. If you have questions, by all means, ask them in the comments. And folks, those of you who know a bit more, feel free to answer other people's questions in the comments. We're all a bit community. We can all learn from each other. Lastly, if you want a specific exercise to have a video done on it by yours truly to see what we can improve with it, why don't you mention it in the comments below and maybe we'll get around to it. We have a whole list of exercises. Your opinion matters. Folks, like, subscribe, comment, whatever bullshit YouTubers say. See you next time.